Hello everyone in TV land. My name is JT Thompson, the host of the Positive Side TV talk show. We want positive things to happen in our community. So what we decided to do, since there are so many other things that's going on in America, our show consists of politics, religion, education, entertainment, sports, people that's in business, and health. At any time, we can have a person speaking on this level. So what we have today on the political side, because this is a very important election, so we have Mr. Jeff McGowan running for constable in Precinct 4. He has a story to tell you concerning his life as an officer in Harris County. We are inviting anyone that want to come on. So if this, not, this is not a Democratic program. It's not a Republican program. It's a program that people should be aware of things that's happening in our community, okay? So if you want to come on, you can. And I'm also give you my <clears throat> email address so you can be able to email me if you want to come on this show. The email address is C U L O R I N C 1999 at gmail.com. C for Charlie, U for us, L for Larry, O for Oscar, R like Roy, 1999 at gmail.com. You can get in contact with me at that particular email address. And we're basically inviting people to come on to talk about what they bring to the table and the things that we want to, the things, excuse me, the things they want to do as far as become an elected official. Anybody's welcome. Independent, Republican, Democrats, you're welcome. So use my email address to get in contact with me. I appreciate you. God bless you and God bless America. Also, we have another segment called What's Going On in Your Community? It's a lot of things that happen in our community does not get the exposure. One of the things that has happened that I'm aware of is a gentleman living at 178. I cannot give you the exact address because he's not here to defend himself. But you will see on the end of our show what's going on. Because people get involved, we don't know the person is a sex offender, rapist, domestic violent, drug dealer, or whatever might be living right next door to you. Homeowners Association, if this occurred, should let the community know exactly what's going on. If there's pictures that's happened in certain events, if they get a chance to get in the newspaper, they should be in the newspaper. So we're going to have an investigation to see exactly what's going on with this individual that live on the block of 178 in Alma, Texas. So make sure you stay tuned and watch what's going on next door. The information that was given to one of the residents from the constable's office, some of the things was scratched out. So we did a thorough investigation and found that the guy was guilty of domestic violence, selling drugs, prostitution. We have little kids in this area, daughters, grandkids that's in this area. We don't want anything to happen to them, so we're going to protect our community. We don't know what you might be doing about your community, but this needs to have some attention and exposure. This was not covered by mainstream TV. It was not covered by the newspaper. The person at the Homeowners Association failed to meet an individual that was trying to talk to the Homeowners Association about what occurred on the street. There was police officers in other people's yard. It was about anything over six policemen. It was crime dogs, or I say drug dogs also showed up. So something bad happened, had to happen. And also, doing our research work, we found out was, this guy had a felony. Okay. Coming from Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho. Police department would not give out information what the felony warrant was, but they did make a statement that said, it's too far for us to come, to come pick this person up. As a minority, and I do think this, if it was me, they would have picked me up with a rocket ship. And whatever charges I had against me, I would have to face those charges. But I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know exactly what happened. We did get to this point. 
Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. And we're going to bring it on. Mr. McGowan, we're so happy to have you on the Positive Side TV talk show. Why don't you tell some things about yourself? Why are you running for Congress? Uh, thank you, Mr. Thompson, for, for having me, uh, first of all. And, and thank you to all your, your guests uh, or your, your audience for allowing me this opportunity to, to basically tell my uh, why I'm running for office and what my goals are for once I become a uh, constable, if the Lord says the same. So uh, I will tell you that my, my service to the country and to my community started when I was 17 years old. Uh, when I went to my mom and I asked her if it was okay if I joined the military, uh, I wanted to go to the Army Reserve because I was number seven of eight kids. Uh, my, my father was, was murdered when I was nine years old and I knew that my mom would not be able to send me to college. So I joined the military to serve my country, but also to, to find a way. I heard something about a GI Bill, and I, I figured that I'd be able to go to college and that I would you know, be able to serve my country at the same time, uh, just going on the weekends. And then, you know, of course, uh, I was called up to, to go to Desert Storm uh, in 1990, 91 and then became a veteran of, of Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and then joined the, the military in 1992 after I married my wife uh, in February. She sent my resume into the sheriff's office and said, hey, you know, it's time for you to stop working at Walmart. It's time for you to get you a career. And I started at the sheriff's office in 1992, became a, a commissioned officer in 1994. Okay, you attended uh, high school uh, Smile. I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's like, it's like a cuss word. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I smiled in high school. I had an opportunity to visit the school that was a well ran program because they had, when some of the young ladies would have a child or something, they could bring their child to school. Mm -hmm. I think they also had aviation over there. Yes. Where you could learn how you get exposed to flying planes. Most definitely. Okay. Did you ever think in your lifetime that you would be on? Be running for constable? It was not a goal of mine uh, to, to run for constable or for any elected uh, office for that matter. But what, what I'm seeing in the, in the local media, what I'm seeing uh, in the, in, uh, nat nationally, it, it is time for people like myself who have a, a unique set of skills to actually lead a 21st century law enforcement agency and living in precinct for my whole entire life, even though they keep moving the boundaries. I have to keep moving north in order for me to stay in Precinct 4, uh, but I believe that it's a great community. I believe that the officers there uh, are great, they just need, maybe need a little bit more training uh, and, and on the community side of things. And, and basically that's, that's my whole goal is to, is to bring law enforcement to the community side of, of law enforcement and not, and, and not so much on the enforcement side. The Precinct 4 is, is unique because it had, it's the largest law enforcement agency as far as constables are concerned with over 500 sworn. They have 250 some odd contracts across Precinct 4, but the, the officers are assigned to specific communities for the most part. Now they have some other, other things that they're responsible for. Their main goal, uh, main responsibility is civil, uh, civil, civil uh, process serving civil, civil process and those things, but you never hear about that. The only thing you hear about is the enforcement side of, of their job when, in fact, they're supposed to be uh, serving Class C warrants, they're supposed to be uh, given, you know, subpoenas for the JP and those types of things. They're supposed to be doing those types of things, but you never hear about that side. Uh, and it's kind of neglected, in, in my opinion, as far as that's concerned. Okay, what would you bring to the force uh, when you are elected as constable? So uh, I will say that the, 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 my unique skill set is that of my 20, 20, almost 28 years of law enforcement with the Harris County Sheriff's Office, I've done all kinds of things uh, with the Sheriff's Office. I've worked in internal affairs. I've worked in community engagement. I've worked in our uh, processing center where we, we, every inmate that comes into the jail and leaves the jail comes to the processing center. I've worked patrol and I've worked the, uh, the Cops Ahead program, which was you know, signed into law by Bill Clinton in the early 90s, where it was basically trying to get police officers you know, out of their cars, walk in the street, and getting, on, uh, getting into the beat. Uh, and then what it, the, the, the main thing, or what I think is, is most important, is that I served as president of the Texas Crime Prevention Association. And, and that's what it's all about to me, is preventing crime. 
we want to stop the crime from, hap from happening before it actually happens. Uh, I, can, I can do a, a, a map of, of, of Precinct 4 where the crime was 30, 34 years ago, or I can do it from six months ago. I can do it from six years ago. And I can put a map on top of a map on top of a map and it's gonna be the same. Because we're good in law enforcement at chasing crime, but we're, we're, we're terrible at, at preventing crime. And that's where I come in and that's why I say I have unique skills as far as preventing crime. Okay, what would be the second most thing you want to do as an elected official in Precinct 4? I, I, want to, I want to focus on the traffic. Uh, I worked in the Motors Assistance Program, worked with TxDOT, City of Houston, uh, uh, Metro, and we came up with a comprehensive plan for the freeway so that we could mitigate traffic. I want to do the same thing for, for our high traffic roadways like FM 1960, where we have deputies. Uh, I know that Precinct 4 had a robust uh, motor, uh, motorcycle unit, a, a solo unit and they don't have that anymore. So I want to bring that back so that they can get to accidents on FM 1960, whether it be on the east side or the west side, uh, 59 or 45, that we can focus on the traffic and we can clear up those, those crashes uh, a little bit faster. Look, I know that the, the, the Sheriff's Office is the, the, the number one law enforcement agency in, in Harris County, that they're responsible, everything stops with them. But we should be added, an added benefit to them. If Commissioner's Court is going to give us uh, patrol slots and give us contracts, let allow us to have contracts in these neighborhoods, we can't just be focused on that particular neighborhood that we are that we that, that, that's giving us money. We have to expand that to outside of those areas because if crime is happening outside of the areas that we are patrolling, it can also happen inside of the areas that we're patrolling.